name is Rodney Alone. I'm going to be talking about some segmentation and biomedical applications of capsule networks. Uh, basic outline of the presentation is sort of what are the challenges we face that's unique to segmentation. Um, how do we apply capsule networks in this problem domain? And I have a little code demo at the end. You guys can kind of see how this works. Um, some interesting challenges that we deal with in segmentation is we typically have larger image sizes. We typically don't try and perform segmentation on you know, 28 by 28 pixel images. We're typically dealing with much larger image sizes. And we similarly have a dense output size. Typically we want class, classifications at every pixel location or at the worst something like a stride four that we then upsample. So we have a dense input, dense output, and that makes it very challenging to fit into memory when you start dealing with segmentation as opposed to classification. Um, additionally, in segmentation, typically we try to balance global and local information. And this, again, makes us have to deal with things at very different scales. And dealing with that scale gives us another issue with uh, GPU memory, trying to make these as efficient as possible. So in a work that I published at the Medical Image Deep Learning Conference, it got the CIFAR uh, award for that conference. Um, we introduced a couple novelties, uh, one of which being locally constrained dynamic routing. So here we, we only route child capsules to parent capsules within a given kernel, similar to what we do with a convolutional layer as opposed to a fully connected layer. And this allowed us to dramatically reduce the parameter burden, just like a convolution operation does with uh, CNN. Transformation matrix sharing. Um, in this way, uh, every parent capsule still has a unique transformation, but child capsules share transformation matrices across spatial locations. And so this way, when we're trying to transform, you know, where is the roof of the house, we'll share that feature vector that's trying to transform roof to the parent of house, we'll share that spatially. Um, same thing we do with convolutional networks, so nothing, nothing crazy out there with that. Um, but these two things being added to convolutions help with the memory a lot. Another of which is deconvolutional capsules, so we're the first people to introduce deconvolutional capsules. Um, in this way, the prediction vectors are formed using a deconvolutional or a transposed convolutional operation. And this allowed us to create the classic encoder-decoder network structure that you see very common in segmentation approaches. Uh, you can think of like UNET in medical imaging is uh, uh, earlier this year became the most cited paper in the medical imaging, uh, the Mackay conference. It was the most cited paper in the history of Mackay. So it's a very common structure, very, uh, um, yeah, anyway. So here's, here's the locally constrained dynamic routing algorithm. This is the key line here, uh, where basically, again, all we're doing is we're constraining our prediction vectors to some kernel within the grid, and those are the predictions that we route for each parent is based on this local kernel. Transformation matrix sharing, as I mentioned, in a traditional convolutional capsule when they were first proposed, they used different transformation matrices for every member of the grid as well as for each capsule type. In our work, we restricted this to only be for each capsule type, but we now shared our transformation matrices across members of the grid. Deconvolutional capsules are exactly what you think they are. The prediction vectors are formed using transpose convolutions and the routing is still performed exactly the same. It's just how we're forming our predictions. And using these, we're able to create a uh, segmentation architecture. This is, our goal here was to create something as close to the original Sarah Sabur implementation as possible so that we could compare directly with them. And then in our uh, next step, we want to kind of push this further. And here we created a deep encoder decoder sort of UNET style architecture. And these two performed extremely well for the tasks that I'm gonna talk about right now. Um, one of which is pathological lung segmentation. You can see on the left, uh, this is a, a large scale medical CT scan data set has a lot of different pathologies like ground, ground glass opacity, nodules, emphysema, 
and many other uh, such issues that make segmentation a challenge. Um, the other application that we were looking into was retinal blood vessel segmentation in fluorescent angiogram videos. And here are the results. So this is comparing against the baseline UNET. You can see UNET struggles in areas that have similar Helmsfield unit values or intensity values if you'd like. There's a lot of segmentation leakages and things of that nature. Um, so here's the results. Uh, SegCaps was able to outperform UNET by a close margin while only using about 95% fewer parameters than UNET. So that was very exciting to see. And there's actually several works that have come out now specific to medical capsule networks that show that capsule networks tend to require less data for training, at least in the medical domain. That's uh, a trend that we're starting to see emerge. Um, we also looked at the reconstruction of the capsule vector vectors and we can see here that different dimensions are in fact capturing different aspects of the image. Um, which was kind of exciting to see. Next application, this is the retinal vessel segmentation. Here you can see on the left, UNET is struggling with under segmentation on this particular patient. There's a lot of areas where you can see UNET is, is missing some of the smaller vessels that SegCaps doesn't have that same issue with. And on the right, with a different patient, UNET is having the opposite problem. It's over segmenting and you can see a lot of areas of that uh, magenta color in there where UNET is really struggling. And I think I can highlight them for you. Yeah, so you can see areas, especially in here and here where UNET is really um, over segmenting and SegCaps doesn't have those same issues. Cool. Um, the big thing that everyone's all excited about with, with capsule networks is obviously the affine transformations. It's equivariant to affine transformations, whereas a traditional convolutional neural network is only equivariant to translation. So here's an example where uh, this was work done by uh, the gentleman right there that uh, is cited on the top of the slide. Uh, they train only on a single image, overfit on this image, and then test on different rotations and the mirroring of that. And you can see that the SegCaps is able to do a much better job of segmenting to those novel rotations and viewpoints as opposed to UNET. Another example of, of a similar vein is um, X-ray segmentation. So given X-rays that are normally trained straight up and down, this person rotated by 45 degrees and you can see UNET struggles uh, a lot to be able to handle that rotation that it doesn't see in training. I have a little code demo. Um, you can follow this QR code or the link and I'll just pull it up really quick. I don't have a ton of time to talk to you guys. So, but I'll just give you a little preview here. You can go play, load up the data, load up the model here, uh, read in the ski T scan and run it through and you get some output that looks like that. So if you guys want to go, this is in Google Colab. You know, GPUs are all there and everything. You can go play with this. It's public. Um, and when I flip back to my slides, yeah, so you can either go to this link uh, if anyone wants to snag a picture of that, or I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, you can also get to it from my, from my website, from my project page here. Um, also, the code for all of this is publicly available, so feel free to look at it. Um, there's already been a couple different clones. A uh, gentleman contacted me that it's in PyTorch now, and um, somebody's also extended it to MS Coco as well. So, cool. 